everybody. Welcome to episode 68 of Games My Mom Found. I am Mike Elberton, and who are the Tiger Kings with me tonight? Jesus. Oh, Sergeant Stephen J.D. Cooper Kai, Stuart Hughes. <laughs> and our special guest. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Nate. Who <laughs> always reference. pays attention. <laughs> Nate McClellan. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> and don't I worry. Uh, any spaces are... Himself. Unless we oh, specifically okay. mention them and then Mike leaves them in. I don't leave them in. Very seldom. <laughs> I don't like So them. is this one being left in? No. Okay. Well, now the, it is. All the comments will be left in. <laughs> right. It's not the space in between the comments. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> um, Stefan, since this was actually your pick, why don't you introduce what we're going to be what we're going to be talking about tonight? Yeah, we're playing uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. <laughs> not a real game, not DLC. Well, well, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, but the title will not say Far Cry 3. So. According to yeah. Wikipedia, it's a standalone expansion. Exactly. It's a standalone game. So I, I put it in the same like category as ODST or like Half-Life Blue Shift, where it's its own game, but it's so based on the code of another game that it's mm -hmm. still well, DLC, kind of. <laughs> but I'm assuming Half-Life Blue Shift actually fits into the Half-Life world, where this does not fit into anything of Far Cry 3. So, well, yeah, it's true. yeah, Blue Shift is like it takes place in time with the first Half Life game. So, that makes sense. I mean, right. this is more of, I mean, I know why they called it Far Cry 3 because originally I think you, I, I think you had, a, you came out with Far Cry 3 as the same engine of Far Cry 3, but mm. nowadays, if they would have made it, they would have just called it Far Cry Blood Dragon. They wouldn't even have bothered to put a stupid subtitle on it. Well, I think, right. didn't, well, see, ODST I thought, do that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, ODST see, is Halo you... 3. ODST. I'm just cutting off the guest. God damn it. What were you going to say, Nate? No, you're good. <laughs> I, I can just mute him. I thought I originally when this him. launched, you had to own Far Cry 3. Like, it was part of the DLC, and then they were like, oh, yeah. we just, now we're just selling it That's separately. What I, That's what I thought, too. I think that was their initial plan, mm -hmm. and then it became so big that they were like, fuck it, we'll just make it its own disc. Yeah, this this whole thing even leaked, too, just because of their stupid-ass Uplay thing. So mm -hmm. it... <laughs> Oh, I thought it's, it was an April Fool's joke that year, and everyone was like, oh, that'd be rad. I think it, it was a leak that turned into, like, ah, gotcha. <laughs> yep. Ah, and, and then they were like, gotcha again. Yeah. It's real. It was probably, like, somebody probably wrote it as, like, a joke, and then everyone was like, oh, holy shit, yeah, and they're like, fuck we have to do it now <laughs> oh, the no. director wrote it down and you know everyone laughed and was like oh that's a joke right and he's like yeah a joke. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want to say odsd was like the same scenario where people were like finding out about it and they were like they're trying to make a dlc and they're like fuck i guess it just has to be its own title well with odsd <laughs> though it takes place during that same timeline of of halo 3 doesn't it yeah far cry 3 is like a dream that somebody had <laughs> i mean <laughs> and this is just you know, we wanted to make an 80s, 80 thing and we made an 80 thing. Like, it had nothing to do with Far Cry 3. I mean, like, I feel like nowadays they would have just called it Far Cry Blood Dragon or yeah. any game of that way. You wouldn't even oh, bother sure. to put you. You would have just made it its own thing because that would have been OK. Mm -hmm. But I feel like during the 360 PS3 era when this came out, which we have not said yet, the year uh, 2013, that wouldn't have been acceptable. Like that wouldn't have worked in 2013, where in 2019, 2020, people are like, yeah, sure, whatever. Nobody um, would care. I don't know, because they, like, they were also clearly going for, uh, like, you still want that name recognition. Far Cry 3 was, like, a oh, huge, huge, yeah, that was, that was I, mean, I want to say that was Game of the Year in 2012, and it just, like, blew up, like, Far Cry games hadn't in the past. I mean, yeah, they're all good, but it blew up, like, Far Cry games just hadn't before. Far Cry 2 was not huge, I don't think. I, I have it. I've always been meaning to play it, but it's I It's a great I game. Don't. They're all great games, but, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. Far Cry 3 I really was, like, play them. Just I've only ever played so... three, so. <laughs> so three is just like it's like it's almost like its own category oh, yeah. of game compared to the other ones. I played no, I, I... Far Cry for Xbox, original Xbox. It mm. wasn't, but it wasn't the. It's called Far Cry something. I can't even remember anymore. But I, it's not. It's its own game. It wasn't actual uh, the, Far Cry uh, one. You probably played Instincts. Yeah, mm. where you get to you come like a monster like animal thing. I beat that game. It's yeah. Not... <laughs> That's awesome. technically like Far Cry 2, and then Far Cry 2 is like Far Cry 7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, so those that don't know, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, or Far Cry Blood Dragon, as we re referred to the rest of this episode, is like a weird... It's a weird eight like some, it's a, someone took the 80s <laughs> and shoved it into a, into a box and everything, and here you go, and that's what you get. It's yeah, a so... love letter to 80s cinema. 
Yeah, it's <laughs> even the way it starts out kind of is reminiscent of Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just says space, <laughs> Earth, apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. Um, everyone dies. <laughs> I had never played this game before, surprisingly, even though I love like 80s, like uh, just like 80s callback movies and stuff. Like The Guest is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Mm-hmm. And I had never played this. You know, again, I love uh, Far Cry 3. <laughs> I first started and that that synth wave came on and I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, we're doing it. I hear synth wave. It's going to be a good time. Well, it's supposed to be that a huge war had happened or a nuclear war had happened and then wiped out America or everything pretty much. Mm-hmm. Not yeah, the idea. World War Three, because World War Three has already happened, I guess, in this universe. It's yeah, yeah the war don't... against the Reds. Don't they call it Vietnam War Two? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like... <laughs> I learned that in Vietnam War too. <laughs> it makes sense. It fits that whole idea of like, because, you know, in the 80s, I mean, Vietnam had just happened not that long ago. So it makes sense that it continues the idea that, you know, fighting, you know, and you have the Cold War in the 80s and it kind of takes all that and just keeps going. Well, that's and like it it's never uh, stops. It's the like quintessential 80s plot where. All, all movies in the 80s are basically about like how like all oh, the Russians are coming to get us and we got to stop the bad guys and the bad guys always this like Russian with a huge scar and like bleached white hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just send yeah. one guy in, let him yeah. take care of it. He's got <laughs> infinite ammo. Just send in Rambo. <laughs> I like how like Rambo kind of started that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like the first Rambo movie is all about like the horrors of war and what that like intimately does to you. And all the rest of the Rambo movies are like, we got to send in John Rambo to kill every last fucking Russian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the Rambo movies, all the uh, all like the Death Wish movies are just like one guy is going to kill an entire city to save a couple old people. <laughs> <laughs> so this, so those that don't know, this game is a first-person shooter because it's yes. Far Cry, and mm-hmm. even the, I mean, like everything like the cutscenes are like comic book panel cutscenes with talking, but they're all like just full of themselves. Like there's one with a Statue of Liberty <laughs> being paid down says, "I don't do drugs. Drugs make you stupid," or something like that. I don't have it pulled in front of me, yeah, but it's the... just like I mean, it have been a big thing in the eighties. Like anyone who grew up in the nineties remembers. You remember Dare. You remember. All those programs that did not work. Well, I mean, 80s movies were trying to take themselves seriously. This game doesn't do that in any way. It's all a joke. Like the first word you hear when you wake up is wakey, wakey, motherfucker. Yeah. (laughs) Every single line. I was curious. Uh, I was like wondering. I was like, I wonder if Mike is going to get like half of this game because every single line in this game is a joke. (laughs) It is like. It is it's like airplane level of humor where every single thing that happens is funny to somebody somewhere in a really mm-hmm. clever way. Yep. <laughs> just, there's like so many lines. I mean, like even just the the like the tutorials of the game are all self-aware. So that's funny <laughs> enough on its own. But then like, so oh, man, I I was annoyed at that. I don't know why. I was just like, I was just like, is this ever funny? Like, is it ever like? funny where the main character is like oh i can't believe i have to do a tutorial <laughs> i was like because it's just obnoxious to me like if, if you don't like it don't put it in the game <laughs> yeah i thought it was funny and that was i'm sure at the time you know, because I, I guess it's just been overdone to the point where now in 2020 seven years later i'm oh, just right. like eh, okay you know yeah. like whatever just move on please you have to appreciate though that <laughs> even even the casting is a joke because who played the main character, Stefan? Oh, Michael Bean. Michael Bean. Kyle Reese himself is the main character in Bloodshot. I don't know who. I'm glad you said that because I didn't know who that was at first. Yeah, <laughs> Kyle Reese in Terminator and Dwayne Hicks in Aliens. Yep. Oh, the the, that's who Spider was? Heroes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And for those that don't know, like the, the, the original plot of the story is you're being dropped into an island, just two people, to stop a general who went rogue, I think is what it was. General Ooh, Sloan. Sloan. And you're getting yeah. dropped in with Spider. Who looks like Sub-Zero from yes. Mortal Kombat, yes. but in Soldier version. There are some Mortal Kombat references in this game. Oh, by God, way. we will get there. <laughs> yeah. Spider. Straight but, up uh, Mortal Kombat. But, Spider was played wonderfully by Phil Lamar, too, which is just it, super fun. But you, and that's awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's Lamar. Yeah, that was Phil Lamar. I, I, at first, I was like, I, was like, I, I know, know this that. voice. That's Phil Lamar. I know him. Vamp. Why is he in yeah. here? You know who Phil Lamar is, right, Mike? Nano Machines. 
Yep. I like how you chose Vamp as like his least famous role. I mean, like it's a big role, but like Samurai hey, Jack, uh, uh, Hermes yes. Conrad. Mm-hmm. I really like. Shock. I love Metal Gear Solid too. That is one of the best games ever made. <laughs> I love Metal. I you know I love Metal Gear, and even I'm not like, oh yeah, Phil Lamar, Vamp. <laughs> That's all I got. But as I was saying, so the way when you get dropped off on this island, like the, the tutorial we were kind of saying is a joke, complete joke. He gets on, the guy's like, hey, I activate the tutorial mission. He's like, I can't jump. And he's getting all mad. He's swearing mm-hmm. as you're trying, as you're making you turn it's left. That's uh, up. That's the look around. Look around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it is annoying, though. Like, I thought it was kind of funny because it's a it's a clever way of introducing people to the game. And anyone who's played first person shooters before, which is like pretty much everybody, like I don't know why so many tutorials are still necessary for very standard yeah. games. But it's just very funny to be like, yeah, I get it. I get it. OK, yes, mm-hmm. I know. I think at the end it says these tutorials are brought to you by Kobayashi Cyborg Lubricant, lubricating yeah. your future. <laughs> yeah. There's even like a text box that comes up that's like, are these tutorials getting annoying? <laughs> okay. Press enter. Press enter. <laughs> yeah, it was annoying. Are you done with this? <laughs> but, and, and your name, your character is Rex Power Colt, which again, feels like yes. straight up 80s. Rex Colt. They call him Power. So every true. line in this game needs to be spoken with like the intensity of an '80s villain. Ah, oh, we meet again, Power. <laughs> it's just, it's just '80s. I mean, that's what this whole thing. It's an '80s game, not made it's, in the '80s. It's the yeah. It's it's a just. It's like I said. It's a love letter to '80s cinema. There's so many. Oh man, if, uh, if we start talking about like the music, we'll be here all night. But the music is done by Power Glove of all bands. Uh, no idea who they are. Oh, 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 oh they, man. Power Power Glove is like the synth wave band. <laughs> they uh, oh, that's why I don't know them. They had music in uh, Hobo with a Shotgun. They, oh god, I, I, they've like all their music is like based partially on like John Carpenter's music, which is very simple, like like very early synth stuff. Mm-hmm. That the dawn of synth music, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Like this thing soundtrack, just like dun 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 dun, dun, dun like just. That's all it is, but like that created a whole fucking genre of music. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Wait, uh, I, is so is is that not the same Power Glove as the video game cover band? Yeah, yeah, that's the same band. Oh, okay, because that's same how I know that's, their video yeah. game covers. I didn't know. I didn't know they did like original scores for movies and TV shows and stuff. So I think um I think this is their first original soundtrack. They did another one for uh, like a platform game that was based on the same thing, but uh, some of their music has been featured in movies this is like their first i think and only like real original soundtrack that they made and oh boy that soundtrack they pull in music from like everywhere there's like rocky music hidden in there the whole montage music uh there's music that's based on eye the tiger oh yeah i thought it was gonna be eye the tiger later on when they do that and it wasn't i'm like oh this is not what i was expecting my favorite joke in the whole game is the credits credits music which we'll get to (laughs) Okay, and one thing we hadn't mentioned for those that don't know, this is this game is made by Ubisoft. We yes. had not mentioned that yet. It's kind of an obvious for most people, but it needs to be in the recording. Ubisoft <laughs> Montreal. Who, and, uh... Okay, it can't be just me with that. Like, I had a hell of a time with the first mission or so because at first they have you like they drop you off in this island, you go a little bit of ways, and you get to a small like outpost. And I, I got into the outpost. I think you're supposed to be sneaky, but I don't like being sneaky that much. Even though I just said I liked Metal Gear a lot, uh, like, uh, five minutes ago. But I wasn't sneaking in the game. I was shooting people, and I kept dying in that first part way more than I felt I should have. And I was like, it wasn't just me, was it? I was playing it easy, too, by the way. <laughs> See, I was uh, sneaky at first. Yeah. But, and then I got a uh, chain gun, and I was like, well, fuck that. <laughs> I was... Because, like, all the Far Cry games I've played, I, I normally, like, sneak in and I'm, like, you know, taking them out with a bow and arrow. So I was trying to do that. And then I was like, I'm just going to go guns blazing now. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah I, that that first mission is, is a little tough. And I don't know if it's just because, like, first-person shooters have advanced and, like, how they feel now. But it, it just, like, switching weapons just felt clunky compared mm. to, like... I've been playing a lot of Doom Eternal, so, you know, like, switching weapons and that is just, like, smooth, and it, I think it's, like, the same button prompts. And in this, I'm like, okay, please switch to my shotgun. Like, this guy is shooting me in the face. I think that's yeah, honestly... It's definitely... It's still a problem that Ubisoft has, um, I think. Like, I, I like, mm-hmm. like, the Ghost Recon games, but, uh, yeah, like, the weapon system is still... 
it hasn't changed much. It's still kind of clunky. And it was it was just the beginning. Once I got past the first beginning of this game, I was fine. Like once I started getting a few more weapons and started, but when you just start with a pistol and that assault rifle, I was having a hell of a time trying to get by. Mm, Mike, did you oh, I had, definitely pistol? put up an army. <laughs> I had every weapon like in, on that first mission. Oh, like I had, I, yeah, I had a shotgun and a sniper rifle. And maybe I was like, hitting the wrong button because <laughs> I didn't know about the shotgun I don't know. until later. I, I had, I, I, I had honestly just purchased it for my Xbox One because my PlayStation Three doesn't <laughs> work right now. So I was like, well, I guess I gotta buy it again. So <laughs> don't feel bad. Mike, I, uh, I bought it three times. So Mike, did you recognize the pistol that you have at the beginning of the game? No. Oh, even What's after we, even after we read RoboCop versus Terminator. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh God! It's from that. It's the RoboCop handgun. And I yep. maybe like the game even less. It's even called the uh, the AJM Nine, which is the Alex James Murphy Nine. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's... oh, I didn't know that. So, I also don't like RoboCop. So those and, that are confused, and... there is a RoboCop <laughs> comic episode coming at some point. Oh yeah, it still hasn't come it hasn't out been yet. Released yet. <laughs> Every single line in this game is a joke. Um, it's kind yes. of amazing. Like the the uh, main like assault rifle is basically a gun from Alien. Yep. Uh, yeah, the flight either. thrower is from Alien. I think actually there's a. Um, this is a flamethrower. Oh wait, yeah, there's flamethrower. Yeah, yeah. Game. I forgot. I didn't like it. It was bad. <laughs> I I like the flamethrower in one mission in Far Cry Three, and that's about all I use it for. And that's I the think mission. You only use it in one mission in this game just to destroy the blood dragon eggs. Yeah, I don't recall eggs, ever please? using it outside of that. <laughs> you can use it, but they have a line right afterwards or they're like, oh, fire actually only makes them stronger. It's like, oh, we're mm-hmm. great. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or it gets their attention to or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it, okay. Like right, right after the first intro mission, I had I was I was getting furious at this game. You, you, you start this game off with an S. Well, not really escort. You have to protect the guy. You have a the spider guy that you're with. You're both in like this. You get into like this corridor area. You got to sneak through. You're supposed to sneak through. They even tell you climb up this ladder, go up in the vent, go through the vent and kill everybody. And I had a hell of a time trying to do this part at first. Like I, I was trying to be sneaky. They'd see me because you don't have the I didn't have the bow and arrow yet, or at least I didn't know I had the bow and arrow if we if we start with it. No, that one. I think that's the only one you get after that mission. OK, because I. I had no, I had no way to kill them, but sneak them up on, sneak up on them. And I don't like sneaking in this game. It's too slow for my taste. He's not mm-hmm. a fast sneaker. And the was, the whole reason you're there is because Colonel Sloan has turned heel, and now he's the bad guy, and you're going in there to stop him mm-hmm. because he he's a traitor, basically. Classic, classic Eddie Murphy trope of mm-hmm. <laughs> we fought together back in Nam, <laughs> but now I've <laughs> I'm gonna control the world. It's almost he was like your commander uh, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yes. uh, Leon S. Kennedy and Krauser. Yeah, right. that mission. They even have a line that's like, "I haven't seen you since Central America" or something like that. Yeah, it's like almost the exact same line as, as oh, Resident Evil Four. Krauser, I haven't seen you since Cuba, which is a that... cliche game in its own right. In oh, some yeah. Ways. yeah, but also it's, like it's when some we ways had... in all ways, <laughs> you're also an android in this game too, which plays such a big part because you get as the game progresses, you get enhancements, you get like better your guns can get upgraded in lots of really interesting ways but you also get mm-hmm. more health as the game progresses you'll get more health you can and i i love when you try to heal yourself and you'll see different random things like he'll shove his finger in a bullet hole he'll take his hand it's like robotic and sh- shake it and just weird little shit or he'll grab a little finger it the finger thing i think those the animations line is, i'm uh, no worthless. hero doc i'm just your regular u.s army mark four cyber commando yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's your typical guy uh, I played a lot of Far Cry 3 back in the day, and I remember, like, those animations for when you didn't have a syringe to heal just being like, oh, that's gross. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Like, Ugh. But these ones I didn't mind watching because I was like, oh, he's a robot, you know, and he's just, like, mm-hmm. spinning his hand or, you yeah. know. Like, it's, it's almost like though. the thing he's putting in his arm looks like the uh, serum from uh, Reanimator or something. Yeah, it does. <laughs> what the hell is that? It's uh, an 80s movie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know like this, but classic I don't watch any movies. Comedy. <laughs> Yep. I skipped a lot of them. Cat dead. Details later. <laughs> I really have. I actually have. I just don't watch. I never watch a lot of 80s movies. Did you guys notice that the crouching icon is literally just a Terminator, like coming in? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you guys notice that? I, I yeah. Love that. It's like a. It's like the little like 
it shows you when you crouch, like it shows your figure in the corner and it looks like how when a Terminator goes through time and there's <laughs> like crouched down, it looks just like that. Yeah. I yeah. I did catch that. That that was awesome. Of course you did. <laughs> You're a Terminator fan though. Da -da -dun -da -dun. I am not. Uh, I've only seen like a few a few eighties movies, but uh was is Die Hard a reference in this? Because I was like, oh, this is eighties, it's gotta reference Die Hard, and I didn't catch one Die Hard reference. I didn't see any Die Hard references. You know, honestly, all they would have had to do is put like a an AUG in the game and I would have been like, That's Die Hard, that means Die Hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> die I Hard eighties? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Was it? It was. Yeah, that's like 80. I, I, don't I don't was 80. I wouldn't even guess. Look it up. Uh, I was going to say 84, but. <laughs> Die Hard was 88. Okay. Ah. We could have done it. But I mean, and also like it doesn't it doesn't take long to do another 80s trope where right after as you after you get done with the escort mission that I hated and died many times. I didn't know I had a shotgun at, at this point. <laughs> and. After I got through it, finally, is that's when you that's when you end up running into Sloan and he I want to say he kills your partner, Spider. And mm -hmm. also one thing we they actually have a scene in here in the, in the comic book cut scenes where they have Spider and your character, Power Colt, grab and lock hands together like a, like a handshake straight from Predator. They do that. scene. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, fuck it. Eh? <laughs> yeah, but, it and I want to say he kills and he kills Spider and like some stupid like rips his head off or something in the Mortal Kombat reference. That's what it felt like. Bat, he does a back break like Bane does oh, okay. to Batman. Batman. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. I'd like to point out the shotgun is the same lever action shotgun from Terminator 2. <laughs> yep. Ah, that's probably why I used it a lot. <laughs> good. It's you really don't do good. the uh, the awesome like one hand cock though. I think um at some point actually no 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 you do do it like you do you do the, like the flip cock thing but it's hard to see when you're not like third person. <laughs> the, um, the, I had a problem. Almost broke. I had a problem with, with the story. Because like, why would why would Sloan kill your partner? And he was just like, "I'm giving you a chance to kill me." I'm like, "Why did you kill that guy though?" <laughs> why <laughs> fighter? <laughs> like, yeah, like, come on, man. Why did you kill? I, they they needed you to hate him, and the best way to get you to hate anybody is to kill Philomar. So. Hey, okay, <laughs> fair yeah. enough point. Because I was like, "You jerk!" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, I wanted to hear more about." So I honestly thought that it was going to be a. Um, I thought it was going to be like a twist where at the end of the game I'd have to kill a robotic spider. Oh, that would have been cool. I thought yeah. I thought they were going to go the route where we named him Spider so that we, so that he can get killed early on, and at the end of the game you have to fight him as like a, a sub boss before Sloan, and he's going to be put into a giant robotic spider. <laughs> And that's why he's called Spider. <laughs> I was like, I was so disappointed when that didn't happen. I was like, well, I was waiting the entire time to fight either a giant spider or a giant scorpion. I'm like, come on, where is it? Did you like rage quit? <laughs> I was so upset. The credits rolled. And I was like, but what about Spider? Wrote a, word, wrote a letter to Ubisoft. Like, dear Ubisoft. <laughs> I, have, I have many complaints. Hard one. Where is <laughs> my robotic game spider? from seven years ago. <laughs> I demand. You release a DLC for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, making up for the the slight <laughs> against me. And they would never no, answer please, you again. Please don't make that game longer. Oh, God. Yeah. I never fucking finished it. I got like two thirds of the way through. I was like, I, I can't. I'm done. <laughs> That's exactly where I'm at right now. I can't. I found Atlantis. Whatever. OK, I don't care about killing the rest of the fucking coal. I'm good. <laughs> um, so I, I want to. Uh, isn't. <laughs> the girl you end up darling whatever her name is darling dr, uh, dr. Awesome. darling dr. Dr. isn't that isn't that his isn't that like sloan's girlfriend or something it's his assistant yeah. she's canadian yeah but they do have like a uh like romance thing going on okay it's That's a what I thought. It was just, yeah again 80s reference you know, gotcha. elizabeth darling might as well be a bond villain mm -hmm. and she felt like i mean she felt like this felt like a bond movie at times too like the, with the, where they were going for mm -hmm. oh yeah Oh, I thought she was for sure going to betray you. Like, well, the game went on. Uh, they kind of at the end. Does she betray you? She does it, but at the end they do the Im implication that like. Yeah, they do like a, a hint, oh, like a tease, you know. Yeah. Mm, yeah. She's a robot too. She's played. Well, <laughs> she's played wonderfully by uh, Great Delisle, who I was just like, I was like, I know the uh, Sam. Uh, Sam, God damn it, I'm so tired today. Mike, that's also a uh, character from uh, Metal Gear Solid. Yep, she was a uh, Libre, Amanda Valenciano Libre from Peace Walker. Oh, I never mm -hmm. played Peace Walker in very long, unfortunately. She's Nova in Starcraft. It's one of my holes that I need to someday fill. Perhaps Ooh. more famously, Vicky from Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> 
That could that's probably more famous. Hey, too. I know that one. <laughs> so and <laughs> after you get done with like the first two main missions and you kind of get the story, like then that's when this the world opens up to you, which is very interesting. Like you get dropped into this. You're on this island. You have full reign of the island, and it tells you to go to the dam, get to the dam. And me being like any open world <laughs> game where I know I know myself. I know that if I go right and keep continue with the main missions, I will not do anything else. So I. I went and went to, and you have all these different random little garrisons, which are like bases in a regular game. They're just, you go in there, you kill all the soldiers, sneak in however you want to do it, and then you'll get experience because this game levels you up, which I liked. Yeah, I like any yeah. game that does. There's like these uh, weird little things you can do to take down bases, and one of them is every soldier you kill, you can rip out their cybernetic heart. <laughs> and for whatever reason, the blood dragons are drawn to it. So you could just throw one in a base and then the blood dragon will go in there and kill everyone. Yeah. Wait, don't you have to shut down the shield, too? Or mm, I think some of them, yeah. Or ladder, like the latter ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really like Far Cry 3 and I like that mechanic. I almost wish the game wasn't open world, which is a weird thing for me to say of all people, but... I, I almost wish a game like this would like uh, like immediately say, all right, like you're going to this base. You can take out this base how you want. Mm -hmm. but we're just going to tell you, to, like, you're just going to go there. You don't have to explore. It's like, it's like a weird hodgepodge of ideas because you're going into bases just to expand the game, but there's no real missions there. There's no point in doing yeah. it. Yeah. And you're you also you have to you have to kill like endangered missing. species too, roaming around mm -hmm. for some reason. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why. It's the same problem that um, Far Cry 3 had and the uh, really all the Far Cry games where it's like, all right, I've taken down like all the bases. I'm getting kind of tired of it. Oh, good. There's more bases to take down. Mm -hmm. Fun. I mean, there was just enough to not have me overwhelmed. Like, I, I didn't mind it because after that first mission, I got my ass handed to me. I was I was irritated with the game. I was irritated with a lot of things. So being able to do these garrisons and get experience and level up, because once you start leveling up and you start getting all those health bars and you start powering up your guns, the game becomes mm. a lot more fun. Yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. uh, I love raiding the garrisons. <laughs> I used that bow so much at first until they saw me, and then we were done. Because every time the alarm still went off, but it was it was fun. I, uh, I did about half of the garrisons, and I forgot the tutorial on how to throw cybernetic hearts. <laughs> so like, I had like 99 of them by the end of the game. And then like, uh, I mean, I'm sure we'll get to it later, but there's a mission where you have to fight blood dragons. And I'm like, okay, how do I throw the hearts again? No. I was about <laughs> like, to say, how did you do like, the missions that require I Googled, you to... I Googled it. <laughs> I said, help me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, those, those garrisons were fun. And I wanted to do, uh, I think there's only 13 of them. Um, so but I wanted them. to do, yeah, I wanted to do them all. But then I was just like, What's the point? Because like, uh, yeah, I'm leveling up and stuff, but like, there's no, you know, there's no uh, point. reward at the end. You know, they're not going to give me like, here's armor or like, well, you know, here's they, damage they and little stuff. Like, <laughs> it really yeah, is a completionist like, game. Like you can, like, like I said, like it's an eight hour game if you do all that and you collect all the VHS tapes. But if you don't do that, you can beat this game in like two hours. Yeah, I wouldn't oh, go yeah. that far. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's, four. Really I think two hours I, kind of stretching it. I beat it in two and a half, I think. Oh, uh, were you doing garrisons? I did one. Oh, okay. did you go to? Oh, okay. Did you submit I'll, your I'll time to speedrun.com? <laughs> <laughs> check actually to see uh, see what the fastest speedrun on this is. Got to be it's fast. under an hour. It's got to be like thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be that long. Um, here's I'll one. Well, you look that up. Fifty-three minutes. I'll talk about the, I want to talk about the garrisons a little more. Like you, and the way they have the garrisons all kind of spread out throughout the map, and they're they're all about the same, but they make a couple changes. Like a couple are on platforms in the water. We got to swim to, and you got boats you got to take out. A couple have helicopters that will be flying around. You got to shoot down. Um, one has just a dragon. It's, you know, it's just a dragon sitting in the entrance you have to deal with, and then you got to kill a few other guys or <laughs> lure the dragon into the base and let him eat eat people, which I also Ooh. did. But it, it's fun. They take a lot of ammo, but they have a weak spot in the chest, so you when can take them down. And yeah, not, if you're careful. Like, mythical dragon they look like a <laughs> think of a komodo dragon and then make it like 100 times Larger. bigger and like godzilla's <laughs> first form out of his face <laughs> there you go i like how much this game made fun of far cry 3 <laughs> there's like there's a number of lines that are like directly making fun of far cry 3 which is it's always like 
nice when a, a company they could be like humble like that or like there's a couple uh there's a couple lines like from the scientists where they just talk about jason he's like oh, oh like a fucking walking white savior complex it's like oh <laughs> i know what you're talking about <laughs> it's like no uh, <laughs> one of the lines from um sloan like a direct line is like uh oh they sent you two after me now that right there is the definition of insanity <laughs> oh because it's okay that's a lot to do with three right then yeah Voss. This whole thing is like he keeps he keeps asking you, do you know what the definition of insanity is? <laughs> the whole game, I, it's weird. <laughs> I played three for yeah. ten minutes. That's all I I couldn't oh, do I it like. though. I think three is like their most successful attempt at um at like uh, a message. I think Far Cry Four and, and five kind of like are a little too obvious. I think they are like yeah, fuck subtlety. Mm. I'm just gonna tell you what's happening. Far Cry Three is like all about uh jason brody like white like his white savior complex just doesn't work out for him <laughs> and it's like really yeah. fucking everything up i'm pretty I, sure it has a more coherent plot than this one <laughs> this is not meant yeah. to have coherent anything it's yeah. just meant yeah to be but it's bullshit it, this is meant to be like, an episode of gi joe <laughs> yeah like like sloan's plot is basically he wants to make the world prehistoric again that's yes. his whole yes. thing that's why the blood dragons are roaming the freaking island and he has a doctor I, who helps him do it, Dr. Carlisle, <laughs> who I uses the down. blood of the blood dragons <laughs> to power you up for something. Uh, he uses them to make the running dead. Oh, yeah, for later. Oh, those okay. Zombies. Um, yeah. What were you no, going to say? I wrote no? down, when, when Sloan tells you his plan, <laughs> I was like, hold on. Far Cry Primal exists, and I've never played that. Oh. I was like... <laughs> I was like, does this tie into Primal, like, in some weird way? <laughs> like, you know, where it's like an alternate, like, oh, Sloan won, you know? <laughs> like, now yeah. we're all, that'd be so funny. Now we're all pre Split timeline. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Although I think Primal is, I think Primal is canon. Uh, where is this one? Is, Primal is the same map as Fallout, uh, Fallout, as Far Cry 4. Like, right. like a two billion years in the past or whatever. <laughs> That's but crazy. But Far Cry... Uh, that Far Cry Primal's own game, like they could have done that with this game too. Like again, yeah. if it would have been made a few years later, I feel like that's what they would have done. Just add a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it would have been it's, a standalone sixty dollar yeah. game. Mm -hmm. Here's the issue with like something like this, where you want to make it long enough to enjoy, but you don't want it to overstay its welcome. Like it's uh, hard if... to, it's hard to yeah. like nail that that very it... like very specific line. It wouldn't have taken if long this game. Ever was any longer than it already was i would have hated it yeah it it, just, it comes so close to crossing the line and yeah. just doesn't for me and i'm like that's why i enjoyed it so much if it had been like an hour longer i would be like I, I get it i'm like it's funny but yeah um, i i really enjoyed kung fury um but that's a good thank god uh, it's great but thank god it's only like half an hour because i know people yeah like, oh i want this to be a feature like film i'm like i would not want to sit through like two hours of this like half an hour is perfect it's it gets all of its that's, jokes in. it's all i need that's so funny that you mentioned that because my wife watched me play this game because i played it one afternoon when i was off and she goes this is like that really stupid half hour movie we watched on netflix that one night <laughs> and i was like yeah it is <laughs> I kept thinking of Kung Fury and uh, Danger Five the entire time I was playing this game. I don't know if anybody here has watched Danger Five, but never heard I've of never it. Heard. Mm -mm. Oh, I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore. It's like another callback to like '80s, like uh, not even '80s, like '60s, like dumb action serials where every episode they have to go find and, and defeat Hitler, <laughs> and Hitler always gets away, and they're like, "We'll get you, Hitler!" And he's like, "I'll get you next time, Danger Five. He jumps through a fucking window. Every episode, he jumps through a window. It's it's bad, but it's like purposely bad. It's 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 like Italian Spider Man. Have you ever seen like the Italian Spider Man and joke show that uh, a couple yes. of costumes made? It's like I, that. I know what you're talking about. I love Italian Spider Man. <laughs> Respect to women. So, and and like the, and like I like how the game kind of lets you do what you want because and then every time you save a garrison, you do get like little missions. I mean, they're really like one will be go kill this animal, but use only this gun, or go kill this guy, but use only this weapon to do it. And they were, I mean, they were kind of they're all kind of the same thing. There's like what six or maybe ten of them, and then you also mm -hmm. have hostage missions, which are supposed to sneak in. But if you go in and run really fast when you have enough levels and get to the person that's going to shoot your hostage, you're going to be fine. That's what I did later on. I said, fuck sneaking. I'm just going to run in and find the guy that's going to do it and kill him first. Yeah. All those uh, well, there's... there's... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, there's one really weird mission I didn't get to do, but someone told me about. 
It's where you have to go into the sewer and kill four turtles. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I did like, that one. Yeah. You, okay. They all have colors on them, too. And they make, there's pizza boxes in the room. There's a gator that attacks you, Leatherhead. Um, there's a Ooh. bunch of, like, jokes about it and something about a, there's a joke about a rat in there. Oh, yeah, straight turtles. I forgot about it. Thank you for bringing that up. They don't do anything. You just go in there and punch them with a knife and they're just dead or shoot them. It's real simple, but it's funny. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Another callback. <laughs> Dang, I can't believe I missed that. Yeah, I feel it, like if I, uh, I was gonna try to like write down all the references in this game, and I realized very quickly that was gonna be impossible. <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> written that I found. If I can, also, oh, I don't have that tab open anymore. So this game fucking mind. called me out, and I, and I was like very shocked by it. Where at some point you get grenades, and your little HUD pops. Your HUD is like a little AI that talks to you. Um, at some point she pops. Up and she's like, remember, the grenades are only activated if you say the important trigger phrase, grenade out. I'm like, God damn it, I say that every time I throw a grenade in video games. Yeah. <laughs> right. Calling me out here, game. That line that line has a really amazing follow-up where it's like a five second silence, and then that, that AI comes back and goes, I want to apologize because I now realize that a bunch of your grenades went off and killed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, didn't I was like use grenades every a whole time, lot. Every time I throw a grenade in any like multiplayer game with people, I'm always like, frag out, <laughs> grenade out. <laughs> it's like subconscious at this point. <laughs> the game is like, remember you have to say grenade out. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> don't don't just don't, you can't just say that game and act like it was nothing. I bought Far Cry 5 earlier this year because I was, like, craving a Far Cry experience, you know? Like, I just wanted to walk around an open world in first person. And uh, I, I put it down. And, like, when I was playing this game, I was like, man, I really wish Far Cry 5 was just this balls-to-the-wall crazy, yeah. you know? Like, that would have been awesome to just, yeah. like... I feel like... And it like, probably would have been a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, I feel like they they try too hard to be, like, serious with them. And yeah like, i'm like don't please yeah. don't like just make it insane like, yeah this is, this is a game about fighting like essentially nazis like like modern day neo-nazi militiamen make it ridiculous make it something that like they would enjoy just to piss them off even more make it like a balls to the wall action like gunning them down mix <laughs> don't be like don't try to do this like over the top narrative and then get all serious about it if you're gonna do it make it funny and then it'll work better or just make it way more subtle but it, it won't be like fun <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's i always i feel like they're always worried about like becoming too much like borderlands or something just too jokey but i don't know like far cry 4 is just like it's there's like there's like not any jokes in Far Cry 4. I'm like, it's just kind of like blah. Like the world looks cool, but the world like the people in the world are just so uninteresting. Like do something, do something crazy. It's fine. Yeah. You don't have to be subtle. Far Cry 3 is not subtle. There's a fucking mission where you're running around burning like like weed plants and getting high off your ass. And they start playing fucking dubstep. Like and that's the that's everyone's favorite mission in the game. Like just do that. <laughs> Just be the Saints Row of first person shooters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of what this game was in a way. Yeah. It's so it's, different. It's kind of the best version of Far Cry. <laughs> just over the top and crazy and weird. And a million. <laughs> it's just like, a, it, and you can care that, like, you can tell they care about, like, their source material because they, it's never like, it's always making fun of the 80s, but it's never like, I don't know, it's never like mean about it. It's always just like, we, like we love 80s cinema so we're gonna give you all the guns that you've always wanted to use from 80s cinema and mm. we're gonna throw you <laughs> in this, this crazy world i love I that um... them. It, it's it, it's funny it makes yeah. you interested and it makes you laugh and even somebody as i've said in this episode i'm not big in the 80s i wish i found it amusing like i i had fun playing through this game like i was just going on had no problem at all just running along happy as could be enjoying it and so that was nice Mm -hmm. And a lot of the references aren't like in your like there's some references that are in your face. Don't get me wrong. But some stuff is like really just like influenced and well, well crafted. Like Sloan's outfit uh, is almost a direct like it, it's directly inspired from uh, Matrix, not Matrix. Um, the bad guy's outfit from Commando. Yeah. And a little bit of Universal Soldier, too. Yeah, a little bit of Universal. So it's just like they they took what people love and they they made every character based on that. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the name of him? It's um, Matrix is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And Matrix? You mean Commando? 
Yeah, Commando. He's he's Same thing. John right. Matrix. Yeah, his name is John Matrix. Oh, in okay. <laughs> and then the bad guy is a uh, a Bennett. Bennett. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Why don't you let off some steam, Bennett? <laughs> Remember how I said I'd kill you last? I lied. I don't know if this was meant to be the case <laughs> or not, but the bad gr- the bad guy, Ike Sloan, his plan, like you said, is to make the world prehistoric. That's mm. the same plan as the bad guy in the movie Theodore Rex with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I did not watch that one. <laughs> it's a really, really, really bad movie. It's like, it's like a 96 buddy cop movie with Whoopi Goldberg and... Uh, George New Newbert as a as a walking dinosaur as a T Rex. Wasn't there like isn't there like a background to that where it was supposed to be something completely different, but they changed it because yeah. because she signed on or something. Yeah, and she also plays like a racist cybernetic cop. Like it's mm-hmm. so weird. It's so uh, it's like you know what's annoying is it's so weird, but it's kind of like Zootopia as well. <laughs> like it's got the same plot. I don't just... know how that goes together there. That's just a very weird statement. It's. It's it's kind of the same plot as Zootopia, but like the bad guy has the same (laughs) plan where he's like, I want to like I want to evolve the world back to the prehistoric era. It's like I I kept thinking about that the entire time. Like, did they is that on purpose? Did they watch Theodore Rex? Did they watch this awful, awful kids movie from the 90s? (laughs) It's also kind of the plot to Super Mario Brothers. (laughs) <laughs> it is it is the plot to super mario brothers <laughs> they're sleeping the whole time what you're telling me oh my god we <laughs> must merge the worlds they weren't sleeping mike all right they were in a different world and then they got back to brooklyn and then 9-11 happens oh, a very right. strange so, ending to that movie about far cry this game is i mean like if you just do the main game it's just if we kind of said it, it's not very long it's all broken into <laughs> I want to say what it's eight, seven or eight missions. I haven't pulled up, but I can't remember now. Yeah, it's not very long. Mm -hmm. But which is it's it's long enough. Like the missions are kind of fun. They all have really, really stupid names. Like all their names are references. (laughs) Oh, you got time to duck there here, which is poltergeist punch it. I don't know what that is. Um, There here is aliens. Are you sure? I thought that was poltergeist. Poltergeist. I've seen that movie. One of the few um, 80s I thought that I was what that watched. lady said. That little girl says yeah. the Poltergeist. That's what I know. They, they also, yeah, yeah. They also say they're Land. here an alien, but yeah, they're here is always a reference to Poltergeist. Um, Punch It is a reference to, oh God, uh, Star Wars. It is? Yeah. Oh, oh. I, I assume it is. There's a part in A New Hope where, yeah, they're, they're trying to get away and also it's like, Punch It. Hyperspace. <laughs> okay. And then you have, what is this shit? I mean, that could be anything. That's a reference to you, Predator. Oh, okay. I don't deal with cycles. I put them away. That's a reference to Cobra. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, the Sylvester Stallone movie Cobra, which nobody remembers. I remember yep. it. Oh, it's, it. oh, you shouldn't. It's bad. It's a bad, bad movie. <laughs> I don't remember a lot about it, but I, I know it exists. I think it's like a fun I think... <laughs> movie to like look at in concept, but... It's so bad <laughs> that that was one of those movies where he his manager was like, oh, if you don't get this now, they're giving it to Schwarzenegger. And he's like, are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure they're giving this to him? Are you sure he's going to take this? <laughs> yeah, I think like it. the only good thing about Cobra is the uh, the cover art for it, which is like him holding this like super 80s gun with a giant like laser sight on the top of it. It's completely impractical. And it's just like him sweaty and painted. It's it's such an over the top poster. And then you have Summon the Plague. The poster for Cobra was actually the inspiration for the character in Kung Fury. Fun fact. <laughs> I knew <laughs> I don't know what Summon the Plague is from. And then we end with I Must Break You, which I'm I know is Rocky Four. That yeah, one Rocky. I know. Um mm-hmm. Summon the Plague. I don't know what Summon the Plague is. That makes four of us then. Oh, uh, that definitely sounds like karate kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that part. <laughs> oh, you must summon the plague, Daniel <laughs> so, I mean, dude. sweep the leg. <laughs> sweep, sweep the plague. Sweep the plague. <laughs> sweep the plague. I don't think that's Daniel what they're going for, but you have my attention. <laughs> that's but... in uh, that's in Cobra Kai season two as they sweep the plague. So. Oh yeah, yeah it's I the callback. The they got wrong. I fucking love. I fucking love Cobra Kai. I've had all those guys too. Very nice guys. Except 
Except for uh, Martin Cove, who was like the most intimidating man on the planet. You're right. I saw him. At, I didn't actually go meet him, but he was at the mm. convention I was at too, the Galaxy Con over here. Same thing. He just sitting there at the same like just <laughs> face, like he just I don't talk to me. Yeah, he looked like he right. would he would have killed. Me. He was eating a salad, and I've never seen a man eat a salad more intensely. <laughs> I saw him. I didn't like. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, that's Martin Cove. I want to go like say hi and tell him how much I love like his movies. And then, like he's he's just like taking little bites out. I was like, ah, I'll I'll probably see him again. <laughs> Well, next year, <laughs> no, I, next year I'll, I'll go to Galaxy Con next year and I'll bring him a salad and be like, I'm sorry, I was gonna say hi to you before, but you scared me. But it was funny because like cancel. after I left, a kid in a wheelchair rolled up and he came out and like knew him. And it was so funny like to see him go from this intimidating man to this kid in the wheelchair being like, he, like the kid coming up and being like, Martin. He was like, David. <laughs> he was like, oh, <laughs> <a> sweet man. <laughs> oh. Um, I actually got to. <laughs> Gonna, oh, we're supposed to have GalaxyCon in Minnesota. It hasn't been canceled yet in November, but it ain't happening this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's going to get canceled. It's not going to happen. But uh, I the, reason, the reason I brought up Karate Kid is because in this video game, there are a lot of montages where <laughs> Rex is just oh, on a hill yeah. fighting to nothing with the sun in the background. Mm-hmm. He's doing his little... <laughs> karate moves and they're playing the karate kid uh uh music or like music influenced by the karate kid music to avoid mm-hmm. copyright <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah i freaking love karate kids <laughs> those, uh, those montages are fantastic oh, yeah shit. i was like i was cheering when they came that might have been my favorite yeah. part because karate kid might be my favorite like 80s movie I mean, mm-hmm. the game is hilarious to play. Like, that's one thing that I, I took away in this time. Like, I I mean, it was I was laughing, you know, after I got past those early missions, I was enjoying it. Most of the missions aren't there's nothing too eventful to really mention. You kind of just your normal for a shooter. Go here, do this objective, shoot this guy. And that's how a few of them are. But you do get a hang glider section. That was pretty yeah. fun. Yeah, Ooh. I hated <laughs> that uh, summon the plague mission with Ooh. all the runners. I can't remember what like, it was. Yeah, that was uh, really it's. Terrible. Where you just have to like you you get like infinite ammo weapons one for each oh. arena and you have to kill each running oh, dead the and I was just one. like yeah yeah just, I was uh, like all right like let's go I, you know like, that's kind of the end of the I game get it that's <laughs> the uh, Mortal Kombat <laughs> reference where it's like test your might or whatever oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, everything like, you get to a door just because you end up going through and you find out you have to get this weapon in order to stop Sloan this Called legendary weapon kill, or something kill star yeah yeah and you go to a gate that looks like something from Mortal Kombat, and they, I think they, yeah, like you, like Stefan said, they say, test your might, the same type of voice, and you go in, and you'll grab a weapon, you start out with a pistol, and you got to fight zombie after zombie after zombies, and these aren't Walking Dead zombies, these are uh, Dawn of the Dead, Zack Snyder remake, running at you zombies, and I, yeah. I hate that. They're called Psychos, I think. The they're running dead. They're Borderlands, when, like, enemy. They're just, they're the Psychos from Borderlands. Basically, yeah, yeah. It's always the issue with Ubisoft games of like, like this, like writing a story that's too big and too exciting for their gameplay, which hasn't changed enough to justify it. Like, if you're gonna do like, oh, you gotta fight the running, like the running dead, you're gonna like, like, like you're gonna fight waves and waves of them. It's like, okay, then you need to do more than just throwing like three of them at me at a time to justify that. Yeah, there's actually a very funny line. Uh exchange between dr darling and uh, rex she says be careful rex there's death in that place and he's like what kind of death and she says the dangerous kind yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's it's so dumb i love it my my favorite line was uh when dr darling says like that was an incredible job and rex goes no doc paintings of crying clowns and dogs playing poker are incredible yeah. what i did that's just the job <laughs> i like that dog and poker reference though because i i remember that like being a big thing for people so it, oh, it the, the poker dogs um, yeah yeah uh, a friend of mine in high school for some reason really liked the poker dogs but i yeah. don't know why coolidge that was coolidge who painted that um yeah, I, I don't know why that's such a big thing in like movies and stuff. Like it's a famous painting, but it like I don't know. It's referenced it's, a lot. It's like yeah, I think it's referenced just because people find it like charming, which it is a very charming um painting. Maybe because it was in Cheers. <laughs> it was in Cheers. <laughs> yeah, it was in Cheers. Uh, he has. Oh, man. I think Sam has one like in his office. He has a uh, that painting. He <laughs> which, would. It's like a it's like a, a million dollar painting. So, oh, he has it in there. 
he would not have in a bar that sounds like they were trying to keep it open all the time. If I it's correctly. arguably one of the most recognizable paintings in the world because of how many, how just how much it shows up in pop culture. Sure. I did um, enjoy that mission though, with the Mortal Kombat mission, where when you find like I, I was laughing. I mean, I was annoyed, but I was laughing because I enjoyed it, but it also annoyed me at the same time because, like, as Nate was saying, it does go on a little too long, like especially in the beginning when you're using the damn pistol. When you get the shotgun, it wasn't so bad. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I don't mind gunning down people endlessly with with a better gun. And <laughs> the reward at the end of that mission, uh, I was like, okay, like that's thanks for wasting my time because this gun or this weapon is great. The kill star, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just oh man. Every like game, that. I, I, uh, I tried to play this back when it came out, but it just wasn't grabbing me. And so, like, I'm amazed that like in seven years, no one has ever told me that the ending of Far Cry Blood Dragon has this really dope ass weapon. <laughs> like, yeah, it's funny too because after this part, it segues <laughs> not only into the montage of him fighting. But then Sloan and Dr. Darling have sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which I'm not going to act out, but she, well, it actually shows it. And she starts saying, yes, yes, yes. And then eventually she's like, no, yes, no, no, no. Oh, that was that was Sloan and Dr. Darling? No, that was uh, Rex. Power. And- Rex Power. Oh. Rex Power. Oh, OK. I was like, oh, I thought it was Rex. I was like, maybe... <laughs> like I missed something. <laughs> yeah. Which is that must have been like so awkward, but so funny to uh <laughs> to have like like act out that scene. Like I can only imagine the two of them in the in the like VO booth together. Because it would be like worse to get alone. It yeah. was awkward having that coming from my TV with you know, children in the house. I was like, ooh, turn this <laughs> down. Ooh. Like, <laughs> Daddy's busy. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> It's very important. <laughs> it, it's weird. And then, like, it, it does, like, the whole snakier thing where she disappears or she wasn't real. I didn't understand exactly what happened. She yeah. wakes up and she's gone. Yeah, she's gone. Okay, it's so, like snake eater. Be mysterious. Yeah, she leaves a, a, a CD-ROM, which Rex reads by putting it up to his a cybernetic eye. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't, she didn't leave of her own. She was abducted is what yeah. happened. Yeah. Oh, she okay. was abducted, but she still had time to leave a giant CD on the bed. Right. <laughs> Which I guess sure, she carries with her at all times, even when she's having sex. <laughs> Imagine it's her wearing like a necklace. <laughs> it's like a, it's a giant earring that she's got on. She's like, just says it all. I mean, just pop this off before I get kidnapped. <laughs> well, you know. Hey, a snake said and Metal Gear Solid, or Meryl said, women have more hiding places than men. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Solid. Don't, rem- don't remind me. Um, <laughs> yeah, the um, kill star is actually from just, like, I, Kroll, which how many people have actually seen Kroll? Like, I'm Stefan uh, and I, maybe? I've seen I parts have. of it. You've seen Kroll? It's like, I was into our fantasy like that, so I, I watched that movie a long time ago. I don't remember <laughs> okay. anything about it, but I've seen it. I wonder if it, it is all... Like I, I'm sure it's remembered by people today. Like I, I would like to know like how many people have actually seen it today, or even like heard of it. It's such does a weird weapon, movie. Does it work the same in the movie as it does in the game? It's just like a concentrated Basically. beam. Oh no, no, yeah. In in the movie, it's like you. It's like a throwing blade. It's like a shuriken. Oh. And then and this, like you get the kill star. I was like, oh cool, it's the thing from Kroll. But then it was like a laser arm. I was like, oh that's a. That's slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> Still if, cool. If you, if anyone's not gonna watch Kroll, at least go look at the movie poster. It's just this weird, ominous thing oh that just God. looks awesome. Yeah, Kroll, <laughs> by the way, is K R U L L. It is. <laughs> there's a number of movie posters. There's the one with them like in front of the face, and then there's another one of them like around the glaive. It's just it's <laughs> they're both so like quintessentially eighties. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 80s, it's great. 80s, I'm looking 80s. at it. I'm looking at it now. And uh, how do I get this tattooed on my body? I know, right? <laughs> well, you wait for the the the, suit, the world open back up. And you, are you going to Georgia? Just go to Georgia. They're ready to go. Just wear. Just don't take off your mask. <laughs> hey, uh, how much are uh, are tattoos expensive in Japan? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think you can only get one in Japan if you're in the Yakuza. So um, they actually stopped Anytime. doing that. I found that out recently. The Yakuza stopped tattooing their members. Well, that's smart. Mm. It is smart, this but is... it's upsetting because, like, I like tattoo history, and 
They were like, it's so this cool how you can... This is a total can... aside. There was <laughs> yeah. an article forever ago. Uh, I don't remember who wrote it, but I'm sure if you Google it, you can find it, where it was talking about actual Yakuza members playing one of the Yakuza games. Oh, yeah. And that is, oh, a, wow. that is a fascinating... This is a total aside, but like... You should look at that article because that's it's, a fascinating um, article. Yeah, there's vi they, there's video of them doing it too. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, because they 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 approved the game. <laughs> that was like the whole they approved most of it. They had some issues with it. I can't remember what they had a problem with, but like their some of their like complaints were very very funny. <laughs> It'd be like very <laughs> tiny things, but like overall they're like, yes, this is like the perfect game for like <laughs> like I don't know. There's something different about the Yakuza than there is about like the Italian mob. Like they almost have, have like a like a better code. <laughs> it's like yeah, you're still robbing people, but. You're kind like, of nice about it. They're like, man, we really like this game, but it's kind of pissing us off. We haven't killed anyone since Sweet Home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a joke where they, they were like, yeah, this guy's a gun. You know how hard it is to get a gun in Japan? It's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> this guy's killed before. <laughs> hey, because guns are banned in Japan. Yeah, because they still get them. <laughs> yeah, well. But they also own like half the, well, I don't want to get in trouble in Japan. <laughs> what? What's the guy that follows you around in Yakuza games? Uh, uh, Maj Majima. Yeah, Majima. Okay. I wonder what they thought of him. I think they liked him. I think they were like, that's actually one of my best friends. Yeah. Is what they yeah. <laughs> He's always <laughs> popping up out of the sewer. <laughs> yeah, he pops up and they're like, oh, it's Majima San. Why is he in here? <laughs> he dresses like a girl sometimes, too. Wait, why is he? He's a video game character, too? <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> uh, okay, fun fact: so run, Running is like walking the... only faster. <laughs> yes. Yeah, one of the... oh, yeah, this game has loading screens, and all the loading screens have really dumb things to say in them. Like, like he just said, there's one oh, of yeah. them. I don't remember dumb? any other offhand, but they're all really stupid. Oh, there's they were one very that's funny. Informed. There's one that's like, um, I think this is the game that one of the games where like the the screenshot always floats around. Like, remember that bullets kill things. <laughs> so that's like uh if you get caught stop using loud guns they're very loud yeah oh uh, when you catch on fire scream all he's a character it'll be like karaoke yeah that's one of them <laughs> remember that time you took that guy down from behind yeah that was great that's one of them <laughs> the hints on the loading screen will give you hints yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> and they're just this whole game is just a joke but it's a fun joke like we didn't mention this but one of the early levels or the very early thing before you go sneak around is you're on a helicopter and it's playing like some rock music or something of that nature some kind of music to, and you're just gunning down people in towers and blowing up oh, everything um shit they're playing a it's like a lionel richie song <laughs> yeah it's, it's weird Whatever it was. I can't remember. I mean, I did. I beat this over a week ago, so my memory of this game is not as firm as I would like. <laughs> it's a popular song. Talking about songs, I was fucking shocked when the credits started rolling. We're not there yet. <laughs> we're almost <laughs> there. I really want to talk about that song. Almost there. Let me... A couple things, and we're going to wrap up the final mission, then we'll talk about that. Yeah, so and, basically... Go ahead, Mike. Um, You also get to drive vehicles in this game. We, have, we haven't yes. mentioned yet. You get mm -hmm. Jeeps, you get jet skis i mean boats i mean mainly you just drive a jeep you, there's a it doesn't i didn't i just ran because running works you don't get tired of sprinting so i said why bother the driving pissed me off so i didn't drive can i just yeah. say the, the jeep in this game um if, like i was a little disappointed i was like that could have been like a it's not like really 80s but that could have been a jurassic park reference it could have been oh, they didn't yeah. go that road though well jurassic park was an 80s so i guess that's why yeah it's <laughs> basically still an 80s movie <laughs> yeah but basically to wrap this up for us <laughs> Um, Rex basically goes to Sloan's base. He yes. says, uh, he says a funny line. He says, Doc, I got the kill star. It's Sloan's bedtime, and I plan to tuck him in under six feet of dirt. <laughs> 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 I, I want like a whole movie about an action star that just like can't quite get the lines right. <laughs> he's just like, he goes way, he, all of his lines are like way too long. <laughs> I'm going to tuck you in underground because you'll be dead when I kill you. <laughs> Prepare to die. <laughs> Coming soon. It's just that's his whole that's his one liner. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to shoot you in the face with a gun that I have. It's a big gun. <laughs> Cha-ching. All of his lines are wrong. <laughs> like he. <laughs> he shoots a guy and goes cha-ching and then later in the game he, or later in the movie he like kills somebody with a cash register he goes bang <laughs> <laughs> that would what? be great somebody write that 
<laughs> it's just such a oh and like the, the end part uh, you're you go into the you go into the final area which is an area you could not get to throughout the entire game because you know you, they couldn't let you Ooh. and you you have the the kill star and what you do you just hold down the fire button and a laser beam just shoots out and just goes until you decide to let to let it stop you just gun down everybody oh, yeah. and it is awesome you get yeah an infinite yeah. laser arm and it's just you just kill everything it's great Ooh. i think it, i it said this is the best like nine times while i was using oh yeah like, there's even a like, line like, <laughs> there's even a line when you're going up there and you're like uh hud what's my current objective kill everything everything kill kill and you're like okay <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not very like also, this game doesn't even end. Like, I don't think you can even fight Sloan at all during the scene. No, you don't. You get, no. uh, you get to uh, ride in the, like, T-Rex thing, the T-Rex robot. It's uh, the Battled Armor Dragon Assault Strike System, and the acronym is Badass. Yeah, the Badass. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that... like, that's the end. That's, like, the end boss, really. <laughs> there was one line. I can't remember it, but it really made me laugh when... Uh, the because the dragon will just like keep talking to you is oh, yeah. killing enemies and he i wish i could remember the line but it was basically like uh now i am sad or something like that yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it kind of whole dragon part because i mean throughout the game you fight dragons but then you get to ride one in the very end and it's just so badass to ride this <laughs> right. dragon yeah. and everything's colorful and rainbows when you're getting to it and there's like, like a bunch of just weird like uh -huh. they're just it's just weird and it has it, cannons and it shoots lasers it reminded yeah. me of that uh david hasselhoff music video like <laughs> where he's wearing just the one glove and it's very 80s he's wearing like oh. a leather jacket that's not the one for kung fury is it i can't remember it's not, oh uh, yeah is it survivor yeah, it might be. survivor yeah yeah i fucking love that song <laughs> <laughs> yeah no he the end of the game is he takes out sloan uh, Sloan says, uh, now it's lights out, Rex. And Rex says, wrong, lights on. Lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I like, too, yeah. it's, it's the fucking RoboCop ending as well, where Sloan's like, it, it, it's like, we're going to throw in as many references into his speech as possible. So you like Star Wars, where he's like, I'm your father. Even though he's not your father, he's kind of you. Oh, yeah. He cloned you, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Like yeah, you, your memories are his you. memories, and then he's like, "I'm your father," and you go, "No!" Like, it's like, it's like we got, we got like, we, we've got like three references that we weren't able to put in the rest of the game. All right, just write the speech around these three references. <laughs> reference, 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 reference. <laughs> and, and then it goes like the ending of like random shit people have said to you, like, "You're not just a machine. You've got something more. You're a, you're a 100 percent a real man." <laughs> <laughs> Deep down, you've still got the heart of a human, and he uses his heart to overcome his robot code to defeat Slow. Oh yeah, don't you get like shut down too or something? If I like for in the story kind of thing, he is like uh, he just can't beat Slow because Slow is like you know I know all your moves like that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. he's too powerful. Yeah, and he's like um, you have some code in you that says like you can't kill him either. They, I think it's what they, uh, what is it? Spider and the Doctor Darling help him remind him of his humanity. Yeah, even though he's like a cyborg. Yeah, it's Robocop too. <laughs> Basically, yep. <laughs> yeah, his 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 red light turns green, and that's how you know he's good. But his eye turns green, <laughs> <laughs> and he shoots uh shoots Sloan in the chest and like blasts up through his face, <laughs> and. Then <laughs> I guess the great line of I guess he was just is like I guess he was just like two in his own head or something. Oh, he says uh I really he got says, to his uh, head. He's like, Rex, you did it, you killed Sloan, and Rex is like, I guess all that power finally went to his head. That's it, yeah. <laughs> As they stand next to this like bloodied corpse. Yeah. And then it does the slow zoom in on uh <laughs> on Darling looking back at the camera, breaking the fourth wall, and her eyes start glowing pink for some reason. Like, mm -hmm. oh, she's a robot now. <laughs> There's uh Weird there's game. one more quote I want to talk I just want to mention before we wrap this up. <laughs> it's when uh you find a collectible and uh Rex says, "Great, I found another one." And there's a long pause and he's like, "What the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> oh, and there is a part when he gets collectibles where he can say at least it wasn't any fucking feathers or flags. Yeah. Yeah. Assassin's <laughs> Creed. Ubisoft likes to be humble. I like that. And then the fucking and then the credits start rolling. And I was like, I know this song. Why do I know this song? Where do I know this song from? And the fucking lyrics 
come in. I'm like, oh my god, they're referencing Miami Connection. <laughs> Holy shit. What the hell is Miami Connection? Oh, Miami man. Miami Connection is a, like, infamously bad B-movie from the 80s. Mm-hmm. And in the movie, the karate friends who have to fight a drug lord uh, who's bringing in drugs to Miami, thus the Miami Connection, they are also in a band, and they sing the song Friends, and the name of their band is Dragon Sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and Power Glove covered the song for the credits of this game, and I was like, I was like singing along and dying laughing. <laughs> Friends through eternity, loyalty, honesty, we'll stay together through thick or thin. <laughs> <laughs> it's and... uh, it's a really bad movie. Don't ever watch it, anyone. <laughs> watch it with friends. If you watch it with friends, it's like it's one of those like so bad it's good movies. I could see well, that. Maintain six alcohol. feet of social distancing when watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, Miami Connection is definitely on Netflix, right? Just do Netflix Watch Party. <laughs> Actually, I have no yeah, idea. There's no way it's on Netflix. No, 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 no. There's no way. I don't even know. I'm looking it up right now to see if you can watch it anywhere because I think people should watch it. It's on uh, Voodoo and Tubi, and you can rent it on YouTube. <laughs> on Voodoo, it means you have to buy it. Well, if you have Voodoo, it's free on Voodoo. Voodoo? Who do? Voodoo. You do? Who do? What? <laughs> Not going to go with it? Okay. Hodor? So well. Uh, did you know you get your reference? The power of the yes. babe. Hodor. The babe with the power. Oh, who who were do you do? David Bowie. I was referencing Blazing Saddles. <laughs> oh, I've never seen Blazing Saddles either. Go do that voodoo that you do so well. <laughs> Friends uh, through eternity, honesty. All right. right, any last things to say about this before we go on to questions? Or I shouldn't say questions. Memories? There's no questions. There were no questions for this one? Oh, I don't. I don't even really ask. Them. I have a couple things to I have memories to read. I don't, people don't give us questions. They just say things. <laughs> it's not really questions. I mean, I tried. There's nobody like. What, what, what are we? People are like. Who are you guys? I don't want to ask you any questions. Yeah. What do you guys know about anything? Very, very little. We know a lot. We we play a game every week. I do a little bit of research, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to do way more when we like the first couple episodes. I basically spent the whole week like researching the game. And I realized very quickly that that was a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> knowing this information does not make this funnier. No, it's, it doesn't go for what we're going for. Very kind of surface level too, so you don't you know it's all there. Just need to research about this game. Um, aside from just you know watching all '80s movies, in case uh, I, I would advise you watch most '80s movies beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, even if <laughs> even if you haven't seen like most 80 movies, I think this game is I, I think it still holds up. Mm. Uh, it has a slower start, but I was into it uh, mm-hmm. after the first initial couple missions. So, yeah, Once if you start, haven't played it, it's the should. same. <laughs> um, it's like the UB, it's like the Ubisoft curve where it's like the beginning of the game is like slow and meandering. And it's like, I just want to get to the fun stuff. And then, like, you get to that first third and halfway point, and it's, like, really fun, and you're just riding on that high. And then at the end of the game, it starts to, like, wind back down again. (laughs) It's like a perfect curve graph of, like, enjoyment. (laughs) Like, all right, I'm putting, like, a couple hours in. I'm, like, I'm doing the same thing. I'm starting to lose interest. I hope this ends soon. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you want... Oh, I I, I went away for a couple seconds. I couldn't hear anything, but luckily my internet did not kill. So I can read some memories that people have about this game. Sure. All right. First, from a Far Cry group that I joined, I had two people comment, so I'm going to read both of them. From Sana Yula. I know I butchered the name. I recently played it, but didn't like it. My condolences. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a good damn game. Um, and from <laughs> Tommy Kahara. I know I pronounced this wrong because there's the little dots above the A's, and I don't know how to sew. If you listen to this, <laughs> my apology. Michael Same thing with the guy we had on Heavy Rain, uh, Lowick. I kept pronouncing his name wrong, and he had to kind of spell it. Then I put it in the show notes. I said Lowick, and Helena's like, what? You spelled his name wrong. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I put it how to pronounce it, not how to actually spell it. What's funny is that Mike started the Heavy Rain episode saying his name right. And then slowly throughout the episode, you start saying it wrong again. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think he got a little upset when I called him Loki. He's like, no, it's not Loki. Like Loki. It's, it's like it was like getting worse and worse to the point that all three of us were like, is he doing this on purpose? Is this like, I couldn't remember his <laughs> name. Like I kept forgetting it throughout the episode. You started the episode and you're like, and special guest Loic. And then by the end, yeah, you're like, Luke, Loki, Luke, Luke, Mike, come on. <laughs> All right. So first question from or comment from Tommy said, what's not to like? It was an awesome homage to the action movies of 80s and 90s with a far cry twist. Funny one liners, explosion, neon lights, lasers, basic hero versus villain stuff. I should restart and play it one more time. You should. You should. Because yeah, it's why not. It's a good and game. I, and uh, yeah. it's a good game. 
And Overblood, I actually got a decent comments amount of comments from Overblood. I was surprised because sometimes Overblood doesn't always comment on these things. So thank you, Overblood. Um, for, first, you have Mark Quesno. When will we get a sequel? Never. We are never getting a sequel. Kind of I like, don't want a sequel. Yeah, I kind of because it would just be too tryhardy, you know. Yeah, they it's... would be like, let's just do everything cranked up to eleven, and then it just wouldn't have the same, you know, feel to it. Yeah, I think they need rather than do a sequel, they need to change their games to be more over the top like this. To to like rather than do a sequel, do like a spiritual influence of it to, to for mm-hmm. the rest of their titles. Yeah. It'd be cool if they did like a like a mix where they made all their characters into one game. And you can play multiplayer. Oh, you just go through dimensions. That'd be Ooh, awesome. That'd be cool. Yeah. 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 Like one person could be the caveman. <laughs> you could you could bring back all like the, the bad guys too. bring back Voss. Because yeah. God back. knows they would really love to be able to bring back Voss. <laughs> <laughs> Voss Montenegro from Far Cry 3. They they killed Uh-oh. him off. And the rest of that game was just so boring after that. And all right. They have been trying Damn. to get that fucking high back of Voss ever since. <laughs> I, you need to put three in the show so I can finally play it. Oh man, uh, I want to, but I, if I put three in the show, it'll be we'll just play the first half of it. Why? Because the second Why? half is just like I don't know. Just what's the what's the second villain's name? I can't remember. It's like is it Huey or something? I think it's Tom Jones. Huey Lewis from the News. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it's just like the second the villain after Voss is like, oh, this is the real villain of the game. It's like he's so boring. <laughs> Voss is so crazy and interesting. And then after that, I just have to fight like random white dude. Like, come on. It's 15 and a half. We could easily do it. We should, so. All right. Enough of that. Um, this one from time. friend of the show, Emmanuel Santiago Rodriguez. Uh, such a fantastic game. One of my favorite FPS of all time. It's humorous. It's not too short or too long. It has amazing gameplay. It's a fairly neat to sequel. No, it doesn't. Because it won't be. <laughs> You're so, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I'm wrong a lot on the show, but that's okay. No, I'm that's talking to Emmanuel. Yeah. <laughs> He's always wrong. <laughs> Don't play Resident Evil, Emmanuel. All right. Friend from Caleb Zerkowski, like... <laughs> the best t- tutorial sequence of any game ever. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, it was funny, but it pissed me off. So hard to say <laughs> best. <laughs> but I mean, so, and this one from Michael Huge, friend of the show, also doing the MCU with me. Uh, I should probably play that one sometime. Yes, you should, sir. You yes. Should. And from Ricky Hannigan, he said, press A to confirm you can read. For those that don't know, it's what it does in this game. It makes you do that. It, it, and they're in tutorial to kind of make fun of you. Yeah, the whole all of them are just like, they just treat you like a fucking idiot on purpose. Oh, and also from Ricky Trust Hannigan, he said he posted one of the co- one of the quotes from the movie. There's only one woman for me, and her name is Lady Liberty. Oh my God, I completely forgot about that part. Yeah, where he goes <laughs> on like his whole <laughs> Lady Liberty taught me not to do to say no to drugs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like the fucking flag shows up behind him. I was like, that part got like really was killing me. Yeah, and that, that's in the I post that on the Facebook page. Starts playing um, like American music in the back from Patsy. <laughs> Suesti. So that game was a riot. I remember laughing really hard at both the beginning and the ending of the game just because they were so crazy. And from Carl Klein, honestly, the best Far Cry in my opinion. Hey, only one I've actually played and beat, other than that one for Xbox that doesn't really count to me. So yeah. It counts. It six was a game. I don't remember it. I mean, I didn't like it. <laughs> I mean, it'll make it a game. I don't know. I, it's been so long. I remember it was kind of just weird when I played it, and it wasn't. I, and it, I realized it wasn't <laughs> actual what Far Cry was supposed to be because the Xbox couldn't handle it. I feel like mm-hmm. Far Cry is a weird series because everyone thinks they really like Far Cry. <laughs> and then I, every time I've talked to anybody, they're like, they're like, oh, yeah, I just played Far Cry 4. Yeah, it was okay. <laughs> like, like, oh, I'm a huge Far Cry fan. Oh, what's your favorite? Um, oh, I guess I'm not really that much of a fan. <laughs> It's like, as everybody like wants to be a Far Cry fan, but this is like the games are fine, like they're great, but they get boring. Yeah, this is the only one I've beaten of Far Cry, so there you go. <laughs> See, they do some fun stuff. The show help you accomplish something. They all do some fun stuff. With oh, and here's an actual question. This is the last thing we're gonna read for this, and we're gonna go to Shelf or Box from Lucas Adams. Said I really enjoyed this game when it came out. Going back to it, does it feel like UB made the right call by trying to separate from his formula in five, or do you miss the simpler setup up found in three, Blood Dragon and four? Can anybody answer that, Stu? Um, Stu? I, I go ahead. Uh, you do, Nate. It works. I just know me and Stephanie can't. <laughs> um, nope. I don't know. I I think there's strengths and weaknesses to both formulas. I think. Even though that's like a non-answer, um, it is a non-answer. Yeah, <laughs> and like like three, 
the problem with like the simplicity formula is like it's straightforward and fun, but it gets really old. And the problem with Far Cry Five is like it's too much going on, and it's not it's not really overwhelming. It's just like not it's like focused. It, yeah, it's like it feels exhausting to be like like to just try to plan out what you're gonna do. To me, mm-hmm. it's like the same problem that Metal Gear well, like, Five had. Metal yeah, Gear Five. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. The, Fan, Fan the worst part about Five is that. I feel like Ubisoft knew that they did not have like a really good story for Far Cry 5. And they were like, well, how do we get players to engage with it? And then they were like, I know, let's force them to. And then yeah. it just went, goes downhill from there. Because like playing Far Cry 5, it's just like, yeah, this is this is a fun open world to explore. There's cool mm. like secrets and Easter eggs and stuff. But then like if you do too much of the activities, the game is just like, uh oh, you got kidnapped. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's like. Oh, don't do this to me. Every Um, Far Cry game to me feels like they have like a great gameplay in there, but they just get they get like the developers get tired two thirds of the way through. They're just like, ah, whatever. Fuck it. I feel like that they they're like, oh, we have this cool open world to explore. Now let's put a story in it. And I like, you know, Blood Dragon works because the story is just so over the top. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Whereas mm-hmm. like Far Cry 3's story works for the first half. Like you were saying that Voss is just this kind of excellent villain. And, you know, he just like when he's on screen, you're like, you want to pay attention to him. And yeah. like, what what is he up to? Because he's just so wild and unpredictable. And then they kill him and you're like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh, so. there's, there's still more game after this. OK, um, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, which... I killed the big bad guy. Like it's Hoyt, by the way. Hoyt is the fucking the, the like main 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 villain of the game. But yeah, Voss is just so commanding and like he's so charismatic yeah. and he's like the villain you want to beat. And then Hoyt shows up and it's like, you're not Voss. Like go like away. You, yeah. You could have had some interesting, you could have done something really interesting with that. Where like you made it about like Hoyt's whole thing. It would have been like trying to live up to Voss or challenging the player. Like why you enjoyed fighting Voss so much. Like they could have gone some like metal gear meta route with it. But here yeah. <laughs> it's just so boring. And it's like, I don't care about you. I killed Voss and Voss is like a crazy drug fiend kingpin. And you're like some dude that kind of likes jazz. Like, <laughs> like it's, yeah, yeah it's fine. I just, and, and you, you said it really well that they've been chasing that high of Voss ever since. And I feel like they just need to stop, you know, yeah. and just like they either really need to commit to the bit of insanity that far cry blood dragon offers up or they just need to stop uh trying to create boss 2.0 yeah and maybe stop like i i'm fine with like like messages in games but it feels like they're not good at writing them yeah they they don't really understand the characters or like what like the characters never seem like they represent anything they're trying to represent something very specific and it just kind of like it's muddled and it's like uh, it doesn't work for this like Either either take a step back and make it more serious or go all the way and make it like over the top. And both can both can achieve that message that you want to send. But you're right. Like you're writing that line and it's not working. I don't know. It's I've always just wanted like more from Far Cry games. And it's just they I like them, but they could be better. <laughs> it's always the right. Yeah. yeah. Every yeah. Far Cry game. I like it, but it could be a little better. Agreed. <laughs> all right. I think we should go to shelf or box. And Stefan, since this was your pick, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. So this, oh man, it's this is going to sound horrible, but <laughs> I actually picked this game thinking like, oh, you know, everyone's going to love this. It's going to be great. I can't be, can't wait to talk about it. And then Stu picked next week's game. And honestly, oh, that's yeah. all I've been thinking about. <laughs> yeah, it's true. While we were, uh, while we were talking today, we were only talking about next week's game. We did not yeah. mention this yeah, game we were, once. Yeah. I feel so bad that these two ran next to each other, and it's not Mike's fault or anything for scheduling it that way, but it's It just, is Mike's fault. Mike did it. I mean, I, there's no... I mean, <laughs> you didn't know we were going to feel that way, but, like, I, I literally was just... This this game was overshadowed by next week's pick, and that sucks, <laughs> but... <laughs> two um, very different games as well. <laughs> yeah, but this... <laughs> I mean, even though I was born in the late 80s, and I grew up in the 90s, it doesn't mean that all that shit just instantly went away. Obviously, that's all the VHS tapes we had and all my friends had. You know, that's this is what I grew up with. All these ridiculously overpowered protagonists in action oh, movies yeah. <laughs> uh, having sex with all these gorgeous ladies who 
don't have any personality whatsoever. <laughs> All 80s movies are fantasy films. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and uh, I mean, everything about this game, like the aesthetic right off the bat, you're like, wow, this is wonderful. Just everything about it is it's almost cyberpunk in a way. It's very uh, Kung Fu Fury. Oh, yeah. Kung Fury, whatever Kung Fury. it's called. Yeah, I don't know. but uh, you know, I liked everything about this game. I will say the only downside to it is that if you're not ready for that over the top humor or action or the fact that some of the enemies, there's really not that many different ones in the game. There's just the soldiers, the blood dragons, and that's basically it. And the sharks and tigers. And the oh zombies. But yeah, so it, it's very much it's going to feel like DLC. But I don't consider it a DLC. It's I feel like it's a full game on its own. It's just if you're not into that, if you're not ready to explore, then you probably won't like it. But I'm going to put it on my shelf because I did and I love everything about it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go next. Um, this is going on the shelf, too. Like I any kind of game where you let me level up and like I get more health and I take less damage and things like that, I'm happy. Like you get like little they have abilities in this game in quotations, like something like that, I think, where like, oh, you take less damage now or I didn't really, I didn't pay any attention. I just shot things and kill people and get playing. Mm -hmm. Hey, in how many games do you say I get to be the Tiger King? You can shoot tigers, too, just like the Tiger King. <laughs> but don't do that. But I mean, in this game, you have to win the mission. Please don't be like the Tiger King. Yeah. I took a picture where I, I shot a <laughs> tiger with an arrow. Because you had to kill it with, with a bow and arrow. And I'm like, oh, I'm the tiger king. Well, to be fair to Joe Exotic, those tigers were never found. So we don't know if he did that. It's true. <laughs> I think they actually did find them recently. They did they? Them, yeah. yeah, they yeah. found like six uh -oh. skeletons buried on the farm recently. There's actually another episode of Tiger King, by the way. There's also a TMZ Tiger King special on Hulu, too, by the way, if you want to oh, watch more God. Tiger King bullshit. I don't I recommend either that much. But if you want to have like an interview things of what happened after Tiger King blew up, it's there. Yeah. So yeah, honestly, I mean, like the last episode should just be everybody in that show going to jail. Every single person <laughs> <laughs> uh, for the safety but, of the country. <laughs> like as I was as I was saying, it's definitely going on the shelf. I highly recommend to play it. I mean, it's not very long. You can as Devin said, you can beat it in two hours. I mean, I put five hours into it, but I was doing all the garrisons. It's probably a three to four hour game. I mean, it go it's on sale on Steam, but you have to it's the first time you set up in Steam is really stupid because you have to go through Ubisoft app. And yeah. It's really weird. I, but... I appreciate what you play is trying to do, but it's, it's just rough. it's always so annoying. Like they're like, oh, yeah, you get like free rewards and stuff. And it's like, oh, that's cool. That's really like nice to have like like, oh, you started the game for the first time. Here's like a free gun. Here's a bunch of free like here's a free shirt for you. Like I like that stuff. But every time where it's like, oh, you have to open you play it. I'm like, God damn it. Just just do this differently somehow. I don't know. See, that's weird that that it opened up the first time and it said like you have to enter the code or whatever except the agreement and I just yeah. did and then after that it never came up again. I don't oh, know. It opens every time for me. I don't know. Yeah. It's just the first time for me too. Then it was once I logged and everything, it was fine. But I also didn't have a VPN running at this time, so maybe that's what messed you up. Do you have VPN? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. They should just I, put I, it in the menu. Like, yeah. just put the it's little stupid. Uplay thing in the menu, and I'll click it if I feel like it, you know? Fucking, um, the Dragon Age games do that shit, too, with, like, Dragon Age Keep, where yeah. it's, With like... Origin? Origin, all of them. Even up to Inquisition does it, too, where it's, oh, like... Oh, I meant Origin thing, not... Sorry, Origin. Oh, yeah, yeah EA Origins, yes. Uh, but, no, thing. it's, like, specifically Dragon Age. Like, it, it's, like the, like, the Mass Effect thing where you can, like, import save worlds and stuff. Um, with Dragon Age, but they want you to use Dragon Age Keep, and you can be in the game and click on Dragon Age Keep, and it minimizes the game and opens a goddamn web browser. Like, this is the worst way of doing this. <laughs> this, is, this is so annoying. <laughs> and that hasn't changed since Dragon Age Origins. It's like, stop. Just make it part of the game. I make agree. it a test at the beginning of, like, fucking Mass Effect. All Mass Effect games. When, like, Mass Effect 3 came out, the game should have started with, like, a little quiz. It's like, do you want to take the quiz to determine, like, what character you previously had? That would be so much easier. Oh, and Stu, how about you, Shelfer Buck? Um, this is a hard one for me. I, I think I'm going to shelf it because I like the 80s nostalgia. I mean, it's still yeah, kind of, it's like, do. it's getting a little old now. I mean, arguably, it's been old for a while. Um, <laughs> Pretty much ever since like Stranger Things season two, it was old. Yeah, but that pretty much helped it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's it's getting old now. But I like I like watching like over the top dumb action movies. I like eighties nostalgia. Commando is one of the best movies ever made. I don't care what anyone says. Oh. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. It's uh, which is the movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger kills an alligator and calls him luggage. That's the best movie ever. Um, I don't know what that is. <laughs> he kills an alligator. and He goes, "Your luggage." <laughs> 
But, isn't, uh, there, isn't there a part on the plane where he like kills somebody and pretends they're sleeping or something too? Yeah, he's like, sorry about my friend. He's very tired. Yeah, don't bother. <laughs> it is, uh, this is a, the, the best one liner in the entire world is in that movie where uh, they hire like this old Navy SEAL to come kill him and he breaks into his motel room and he's like, fuck you, asshole. And Arnold Schwarzenegger's comeback is, no, fuck you, asshole. It's like, what? <laughs> they wrote that line. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't an ad lib. <laughs> fuck you. No. Fuck you. Oh, you got me. Damn. <laughs> but, yeah, I can't forgot uh, what movie that's from. That's from Commando. Oh, no, don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. That's the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Remember when I said I'd kill you last, silly? Yeah, that's right. You said that. I lied. Let <laughs> 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 off some steam. <sighs> Let's just watch all the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. We'll just do a marathon. Um, <laughs> it'll be like a. <laughs> We'll do a charity stream where we watch Including every single jingle like, all the way. Yeah, yeah. Any movie where he does any action scene whatsoever, we'll watch it uh, in chronological order of release. And by uh, by Terminator Genesis, we'll all want to kill ourselves. Oh God! And we'll we'll raise money for the Arnold Schwarzenegger Fund for uh, for terrible movies. So you were saying shelf or box? Yes, I'm going to shelf this because I like the I like the over the top '80s joke. I like that it's a love letter to '80s cinema. The music is great. The references are great. It's it has the same problem that every Far Cry game has, no matter how long it is, where it's kind of boring in the beginning and it picks up and it gets kind of boring at the end, which is like something I just come to expect. But um, I still enjoy all Far Cry games. I still like them. I like I like the shooting. I like the mechanics. The synth wave is great. Power Glove is great. The fucking Miami Connection reference is unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know. Only I don't know. You. Yeah, it's it's such a specific reference to only a very a very niche group of people. <laughs> I was very I happy with on this podcast. Right? <laughs> yeah, so I think it's going to go on my shelf, but it's not going to go very high on there. It's 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 the Far Cry problem, man. I like all the Far Cry games. I just wish they were better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Like I said, like shelves. I said, this is the only one that I would play. I I honestly wouldn't even bother going yeah. back to any other Far Cries, unless Far Cry? of course they're on the show. But <laughs> I was waiting. I'm like, mm, you're saying dangerous <laughs> words here. I think yeah. if we went back to like, we like to fuck over each other on the show. Yeah. Yes, we do. Like, so you never want to play that game, huh? On the list it goes. We have to do like a post mortem for three of like three is an interesting story of like how it blew up so insanely and then how it kind of like just completely petered out from like the diaspora that we of games we talk about. But mm -hmm. it'd be like it's an interesting game to look at. It's just so after you fuck it, after you kill Vaz, it just gets so boring. I'm actually against the, the game you just posted, Mike. I do not want to play that. I don't. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not going to be on the next. I don't want to pick it. Okay. For those that are curious, Low in the Dark for 360 PS3 era. It's bad, oh but... God, no! Let's not play that. <laughs> Did you oh, like God. spin up your jacket and look at your weapons? And yeah, yeah. And stuff. Mind stuff. I beat it that, before. I remember reading that in a. I think it was Game Informer, and I was like, "Damn, that sounds so cool!" <laughs> like, yeah. I want to do that. <laughs> so easy in those days to make everyone be like, "Holy shit, that's the coolest thing ever!" Like, Devil May Cry. <laughs> Just the act of like flipping the gun around and Devil May Cry was like, well, this is the best oh, game yeah. ever made. We'll never get cooler than this. Um, Speaking <laughs> of pressing <laughs> buttons and flipping things around like lightsabers. Oh, my God. That's like, there, Nate, how about you? Show for a box. You know, at first I was not enjoying the game. Uh, but like I said, I, I think this would go on a shelf on, on my shelf uh, mm -hmm. just because I really like that ending to the game. It's it's awesome. And uh, you don't really I don't know, you don't really get that feeling of like complete power fantasy in most yeah. first person shooters now. So I was just like, hell, yeah, this is awesome. So, uh, yeah, it it's going to go on my shelf. <laughs> it's a hard Four balance shows. to strike because all the other Far Cry games, they like actively avoid that ending. They actively avoid like, you yeah, know, being the good guy. You never you never feel like you're the coolest dude on the earth yeah. in Far Cry games, but this one, they make you feel that way. It's almost like, um, it's almost like a, like a disparity. Like it, it, I don't know if it hurts those games, but it's weird to like end a game where you've killed like 600 of the most elite soldiers on the planet to like, to kill this drug kingpin. And at the end of the game, you're just like, you're still like a loser and everyone hates you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of nice to end the game and be like, uh, 
Oh, Do you want to introduce good. next right. week's? Yes. Oh, man. Next week is... So as we mentioned before, we uh, we mentioned this last week. We've started playing... We, we've changed our schedule around so that we can play some longer games. And excitingly, the first long game that we're playing is the arguably the best Star Wars game ever made. Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> I had a chance. I could have jumped in there and said something, but I didn't. I wasn't fast enough. I was waiting for you to. I was, I was, sure I was thinking of something. <laughs> we, yeah. Oh, man. And what that what's going to be annoying about that episode for all of our audience, and I apologize, is that I'm going to be just gushing about that game. And the guest we have on is a good friend of mine who also loves that game. And she's going to be gushing about it. And so <laughs> it's just going to be like the two of us talking about like, it, it, honestly, it's going to be like me and Steph and all three of us talking about how like interesting Revan is while Mike is in the background. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to go on for a long time. Should we even warn people about what might happen yeah. on that one? Yeah, um, yeah. we can. I'll, I'll say it in case if it does. My my plan, if it does go four hours, which I'm expecting it to, is I'm going to break it up into two parts, but they will still be released in the same week. So you'll still it just gives me more time to edit since we we record yeah. these on Sundays and release them on Monday nights because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and that was the schedule I started with when we first started the show. And we're going to change that eventually. But that's not yeah. happened yet. We don't have a backlog of games yet. So mm -hmm. uh, I got a backlog of everything else. Just not those. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. What we need to do is we need to do a backlog of like um like the easy uh, like special topic episode. And just have that one week. It's coming. Next let's just week. do video. Game. Let's just do video game commercials number two and, and have that as like a, a free week. That's coming next season. For next sure. season. OK, <laughs> we're working out on it. We're we're not expert podcasters yet. Hey, we are expert. I mean, this is expert podcasting right there. I listen to enough of them. That's how experts sound, too. <laughs> experts have backlogs. <laughs> experts, okay. experts hire editors. <laughs> they Completely unsure of things. I and hire have myself. absolutely no idea what they're doing. I, I just don't myself. pay them. Time, my time is my money. <laughs> we are professional. <laughs> I hired DJ for the first 13 episodes, but I didn't pay him. What's going to be count? difficult about next week is um, just like we're going to talk about the game and then I feel like there's going to be so much we're going to talk about around the game. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I we'll, just... we'll get to that next week. <laughs> so I think we should wrap up this episode. Um, first thing I do want to say is want to give an awesome shout out to our awesome intro courtesy of Bobby, AKA Mike Stoney from his DP bite the bullet song school kid squad. The next thing I do want to say is please listen to our comic episodes. Please listen to our MCU. I currently have two of them up so far. Iron Man and Hulk as I'm just... continuing my, that is a fun fucking adventure, man. I, I already watched five of them, even I only published two. I'm actually making a backlog for those because <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> so we actually got all we got the first five recorded. And so, yeah, please listen to those. Um, we also like we have many comics. We got more comics coming up for you soon. I think next month, next month's comic episode. Wait, actually, you know what? Next month's comic will be Robocop. So look forward to that. That's what I'm going to publish. Oh, OK, I wasn't sure if I can do that or Superman, but I'll say Superman for later. It's the same story. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically. But, so please listen to because we, we and another thing I do want to ask you if you like the show, if you want to help us out, you don't need to pay us any money. We eventually we might have Patreon eventually. But I want eventually you to, you'll please, need to let pay somebody us know. Let somebody know they like that you like us. Make a tweet about it, make a Facebook post about it. Tell somebody. Go tell a coworker to do that for us. Because I mean just that little thing can help us grow our numbers, especially in a time where people aren't listening to many episodes and people are down right now and they can listen to a bunch of assholes talk about games and sometimes criticize each other. So I don't, I don't know if I need to go that far as to say like, we're the cure for boredom. <laughs> yeah. We have very different levels of, of like self-confidence, me and Mike. <laughs> well, Hey, I can't tell you how many podcasts I listen to. What, like even when I'm playing KOTOR, for example, I listen to podcasts. I play KOTOR and I click yeah. through the dialogue really fast too. You're going to, oh, you are, next week. you are a little obsessed, that's, Mike. <laughs> that's the best way to play KOTOR. <laughs> Someone say, "Yeah, as I'll my wife say this. said, my mom follows my second wife." Yeah, it, just listen to us instead of injecting yourself with Lysol, okay? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we both. Hey, what we can say: inject yourself with Lysol. Listen to us. We both do the same thing. We both don't cure Corona, so you know <laughs> that's. <laughs> we might get, just stay at home and listen to the podcast, and then we can claim that we cure Corona. <laughs> we prevent cure Corona disease. <laughs> Stay at home and listen to us instead of going out, and you will be a safer human being for it. Oh, and I almost <laughs> forgot this, but Nate, do you want to? You have something that you want to plug? Uh, yeah. If you like hearing the dulcet sounds of my voice, uh, I stream irregularly over at uh, <laughs> twitchtv inerata. Go give me a follow, and then you can get notified when I'm live. Currently, I lost a bet this year, so I'm playing through Doom Eternal to platinum it. Oh uh, God! Which All has right. been a thrill ride because. 
I don't like the new Doom games. So, <laughs> oh wow, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to uh, maybe just like even I don't know, like maybe spell it out just so people know? It'll be in the show. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Uh, I'll I'll spell it out uh, anyway. It's going to be uh, I-N-T-E-R-R-O-T-T-A. All right. All right. So, guys, go give him a follow and we will see you next week for lots and lots of Star Wars. Yes. I'm going to apologize early. All right. Bye, everybody. So sorry. Friends for eternity. (laughs) 